Now, we still have a lot of birds around, but what you'll tend to find is that if you think about what birds you saw when you were a kid, there isn't as much variety now. There's a lot less of the smaller birds. So the smaller birds in decline, and we've got these larger birds, and sometimes we consider them pest birds, which are in much more abundance. And there's a number of reasons why this isn't the case. Often these larger birds have adapted to the way that we build our urban landscape, whether our public or private spaces. So they're more adaptable to that. They've also seen many of these birds um, have basically become very well adapted to feeding off our waste stream. So our waste food stream. And so that creates a build up to a level of the amount of food that's available. So therefore you get a lot of pigeons and all those sort of things. Because there's more of these larger birds, often these larger birds are also able to predate on these smaller birds. So there's lots more predation going on. So when I see these in my gardens, um, currawongs, magpies, ravens, butcher birds, cook burrows, beautiful birds, see them all in my garden, but they are also higher order birds. And so they will predate. If there's more of them around, they'll be predating more on the smaller birds. This is a little bit about garden structure, okay? Lots of lawn, maybe some big trees, not a lot of density. Okay, not a lot of variety. This is the type of garden that would be loved by a, a bird that would, a hunting bird, magpie or something like that, that would love to sit on a branch and then swoop down onto the ground, do a bit of hunting, do a bit of scavenging around looking for worms and then go back up into the trees. Versus the garden on the right, which is dense, lots of dense variety of plants. This is what is more favoured by the small bird. They can get lots of good resources, they don't have to travel very far, and they can escape predators relatively easily. So just think about your own garden structure and think about, well, is there some places that I should try and create more density, more resources, more protection, more food resources? So that's another thing you can think about because that will support the smaller birds. We also have these bully birds, so they might predate, but they are very bossy. If they start to get a hold in your garden, then it can be a bit of a challenge. Things like the noisy Indian miners, bellbirds, wattle birds. And part of this is about your structure as well. It could be also that if you have a garden full of grevilleas, you're going to get those nectar loving birds like the honey eaters, the wattle birds, and they can be quite territorial in protecting that resource. And so they'll scare off a lot of other birds. So again, just have a little think about the types of birds and why they might be there. And then we've talked about cats and, and, and feral animals as well, pets and feral animals predating as well. So for small birds, a lot of them, they're living on the ground, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them are hunting in the mulch and looking for insects and um, you know, in the low shrubs and things like that. So they're much more vulnerable to being predated upon than the birds that will like to live up in the high trees.